total total demand or sorry, I, uh, what was the? Oh sure. So um, yeah, volume, demand, volume for um, each of the categories, and I think Tracy had it for each brand as well. Sure. So uh, just under two hundred million um, I use for common factor eight. Okay. Um, and for uh, for for plasma derived or one little one little brand factor, uh, another twenty four million I use. Okay. And just to give rough allocations within that. Um, so Newick. Uh, would represent um, I'm sorry uh, about seven percent uh, Coval tree forty four percent. Zintha, fourteen percent. Four percent for a lactate. Uh, Twelve percent for Jivy. And about thirty percent for uh, Dynavate. And then with between the plasma derived, so looks like uh, so yeah, between uh, humate and will eight, it's about two thirds uh, humate and one third will eight. Okay, got it. Okay, and then do um, you have the hemophilia B? Available. Yeah. So, uh, f uh, for the recombinants, uh, full year forecast would be uh, 36 million. I use. And that would be. Uh, about 52% uh, benefits, 7% uh, alprolix, and 37% um, revenite. Okay. Sorry, you said 37? 37, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, and then um, would he happen to have the volume for MU9? Uh, I yeah, so full year forecast, uh, 1.7 million I use. Okay. Okay, and then what about Nia's phase and FIBO? Days is uh, about fifteen thousand uh, would be milligrams. Okay. And fiber would be about four million uh, units. Okay. And heme Libra. I know you probably won't be able to split it by by indication, but do you have that at all? Yeah, so uh, for this year, uh, about 800,000 uh, milligrams, and that would be, um, I'm trying to think offhand here, the 
think the, the oh, actually I have it here. So uh, about uh, I'll say two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand of that would be the uh, kind of legacy um, inhibitor patients, mm -hmm. um, and the remainder would be the newly eligible um, non-inhibitor but severe hemophilia uh, patients. And those patients, of course, have only, uh, the gate only opened mid-October, so, um, uh, so yeah, the impact of that is significant but only uh, felt, you know, only starting to ramp up as of October, so only partially taking effect for this fiscal year. I see. Okay. Got it. So um, I was looking at an article a few days ago regarding the um, uptake of heme libre in, in Canada, and it, I think it mentioned there were, by the end of the year, they expected about 100 patients. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well? Will be higher than that um, uh, for sure. Right now, it's uh, it's really only limited by uh, by pretty much by Roche's ability to uh, to bring volume in, um, and not to say that they they are necessarily constrained. It's just we, we've I think all parties have been surprised uh, by the rate of uptake um, on, on the high side. Uh, so yeah, each month as we uh, see more actual results, we're, we're revising up, um, and, and in several cases, uh, quite significantly, our our forward uh, forecast. So um, yeah, each month we're going back to them and and, and, and revising upward uh, our, our outlook. So they're they're constantly um, uh, need to readjust to bring to bring more in. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, but but with all that said, uh, I think we've we've ha already received uh, requests for approval for certainly more than 100 patients um, already. It might be it might be uh, even uh, greater than 150. Okay. So it sounds like um, the decision by Genentech, it's not necessarily a production constraint on their end, is that fair to say? Um, uh, sorry, G Genentech is, is that the... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Genentech, I know that, I think that, I don't, are, are they the marketer of it in Canada? Um, maybe Roche? Uh, no, we, we, so yeah, I just, uh, and forgive maybe my lack of uh, just industry awareness on the, on on that, but for us, we, we deal with Roche Canada. I see. Okay, is the, is the name of the entity, but we're probably talking about the same. Just 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 yeah, the distributor that we, we deal with. Um, yeah, no, nothing. They're they're not certainly not uh, restricting others. There's no indication that they they are you know materially constrained. Uh, we actually just keep kind of uh, coming back to them and, and uh, increasing our. Uh, our order uh, uh, on, you know, at, at rates that are just not realistic to turn around. So, um, but but uh, all I have to say, uh, that likelihood is that that will be, they'll be caught up to that, um, to that pace once, you know, once you've kind of gotten past the uh, surprise of it, uh, probably within the next couple of months. Okay. And the patients who are switching to Hemolibra, do you have a sense of what brands that are typically switching from? Yeah, so we actually do, in this case, have really good data. And we have, uh, because there's a request uh, approval, approval process and there's a form associated with each patient being added, uh, that actually also requests data on the brand that each patient is migrating from. Um, and so I don't have that at my fingertips here, but in general, when I've, when I've reviewed that, it's been pretty much aligned to the distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, so all that to say, no no bias or trend or, you know, any leaning to necessarily towards more towards one brand or another, more, you know, other than just the